If you live in a medium to large house or business, chances are one Wi-Fi router will not be enough to cover your whole home. You'll end up with dead spots or places where the connection is slow and unresponsive. This will never do in the modern world we live in today. So here are some ways to provide coverage to your whole home. First, let's go over the components of your home network. Your internet starts at the modem, either being a cable or fiber modem. This piece pulls the internet signal out of the glass fiber cable or the copper coax cable, separating it from the TV and phone services that are sent through those cables. From the modem, the internet is sent to your router, which is responsible for directing all of your home's internet traffic to the right place. But before the router can start routing your request, you must connect to it first. And there are two ways of doing so. First, you can use an ethernet cable and plug it directly into the router. This will give you a solid and reliable experience without having to worry about your connection dropping. However, in the mobile world we live in today, an ethernet port is not always a guarantee. That's where Wi-Fi comes in. Some routers have antennas on the outside, like this one, while others hide the antennas inside the box, like these. Either way, the Wi-Fi signal is broadcasted outwards in a radius, picture something like a sonar scanner. The closer you are to the router, the faster your speeds will be. The further away and the more obstacles between you and your router, the slower your speeds will be until your connection is eventually dropped, creating a dead spot. With that overview out of the way, let's see how to eliminate those Wi-Fi dead zones. Quick note, here I'm only going to cover the basics. In future videos, I'll break down how to set up each of these solutions. The cheapest option here is to get a range extender. You can get a good one for around $50. A range extender does exactly what it says. It extends the range of your Wi-Fi. Plug the extender into a neutral area where it can get a solid connection from the main router, but it can also extend it to a wider area. Here's one of my problems with range extenders you end up with multiple Wi-Fi networks. For example, you have your main router covering the left side and you put a range extender in the middle, which will extend your Wi-Fi coverage to the right side of your house. The whole home may have Wi-Fi, but it's not as simple as being able to walk from one side of your house to the other and automatically jump between your main router and the Wi-Fi extender. Instead, you'll have to change the Wi-Fi network you are connected to as you go from one side of the house to the other. That's where a mesh network comes in. Set up with a mesh network is about the same as with a Wi-Fi extender with more of a focus on the software aspect of things. You see, most mesh networks come with a mobile app that guides you through the configuring of your Wi-Fi network for the best experience. It may have you plug it into one place, run some tests and tell you if it's a good location. On top of the guided setup, all of the nodes broadcast the same Wi-Fi network. So as you move from one side of your house to the other, it will automatically switch you to whichever node will give you the best results. Also, each node is a full router which handles its own processing. There's one problem with both range extenders and mesh setups. Both of these solutions can only rebroadcast the same or slower Wi-Fi speeds than they are receiving. For example, you're paying for 100 megabit per second internet, but due to distance from your main router and obstacles, your mesh child node or range extender can only receive 50 megabit per second connection from the main router. So 50 megabits per second is the max that extender can output. For some, that may do the trick, but others may want the max speeds throughout their home. This is where things get a bit more complicated. In order for a range extender to rebroadcast your network's full capacity, you'll need to plug that extender directly into your main router using an ethernet cable. But depending on the structure, this can be a tedious task running internet cables to every corner of your home, especially for residential customers. Instead of running ethernet cables, there's one other possible solution, power line. Getting a power line adapter will let you use your existing electrical wiring to also supply the internet. 
Before going any further, let me warn you that your experience may vary. There could be many things hidden behind your walls that can interfere with your internet or even filter it out completely. But if you want to try it, here's how it works. You have two adapters. One injects internet into the power outlet and needs to be plugged in next to the router. Another adapter attempts to pull the internet signal out, and it may take a bit of trial and fail to get the second adapter in the right place. And just like that, you're sending internet through your walls. You can then grab the internet in one of two ways. Most have an ethernet port that you can plug into your desktop device, while others have built-in range extenders. And there you go. Those were some ways to make sure you have a strong Wi-Fi connection anywhere in your home. Out of all of these solutions, I would recommend going with the mesh setup as it's newer and a bit more robust. However, if you're just trying to get the job done cheaply, a range extender could be your solution. Or if you don't want to deal with any of this yourself, you can contact your internet provider who should be able to come out to your home, figure out the best solution for you, install it, and offer support all for a monthly equipment fee. Or if you want to try doing it yourself, stay tuned as I plan on making in-depth examples on how to set up each of these Wi-Fi extending solutions. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when those future videos are released. To learn more about these solutions, check out the links in the description, along with links to our website, social media pages, and our Patreon, where you can directly support this channel. Once again, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.